All right, good day, everyone. Uh, my name is Daniel Chu. I'm a senior principal engineer in the VxWorld technical marketing team. I'm also joined by Travis Chow from the product management team, and he'll be helping with answering questions that you may have throughout the presentations. Definitely appreciate that this presentation and this agenda is set again, is based on Pacific time because it really helps me out to start the day. But uh, yeah, so let's uh, start with the session. In the session, you'll learn about how we are enhancing the VxL lifecycle management experience by introducing VMware VLCM compatibility. And this compatibility will allow our customers to have more flexibility and capability in performing cluster updates while stay, still maintaining what they value most in the VxWorld clusters, which is being in this continuously validated state. All right, so, um, so Ash alluded to the VxWorld HCI system software, and this is really where the VxWorld advantage really comes from. It's the software that allows us to differentiate in areas like lifecycle management, and it really extend those benefits through our VxWorld API and SaaS multi-cluster management to apply to more use cases and scale management to multiple VxWorld clusters more easily. But at its core, it's really, the customers are really uh, buying VxWorld because of the lifecycle management experience through continuously validated states. And how we deliver it, it's really through our extensive investment in testing and validating the HCI stack to produce this electronic compatibility matrix, which I'll talk about next. The, the connector service in VxWorld HCI system software establishes the communication to vSphere, vSAN, vCenter, and PowerEdge server through iDRAC. So the cluster is managed as a, as, as a single system for streamlined automation and orchestration. So as you can probably tell, I've been talking about continuously validated states a lot because it is a big deal to us and really to our customers. Because even as we add new capability to LCM, we're not changing the core component of what differentiates VxWorld from others. All right, so what is a validated state? It's basically a golden image for the entire HCI stack. This is kind of the quote unquote happy state where a user knows that all the software, firmware, drivers in the cluster are compatible with one another and it can interoperate to provide that optimal performance for those applications running on the clusters while still being secure. So, Achieving a happy state requires research and testing. And since a happy state can really evolve over time because you're constantly updating, this type of work is endeavor to kind of constantly research and test. It's also a risky activity. So whenever users are making configuration changes to the production environment, that work is constant and the risk continues. So the choice is really whether as a customer, you choose to bear this responsibility and invest in, time, in the time, the resources, in the knowledge gathering, while really preserving that flexibility on what you want to run on the cluster. Or you would rather offload this responsibility and devote your resources somewhere else like application development or IT as a service type of projects. The VxWorld business delivers or devotes 100 plus personnel, 60 plus million dollars in testing resources as well as 25,000 test, testing hours per release. So for VxWorld customers, they're gladly choosing the latter option of allowing VxWorld to do that because it's a simpler way to manage infrastructure. And the chart here on the slide is an example of what the VxWorld team delivers for every EXI release. So I believe this one on the, on the slide is 47300, which supports EXXI 67 update three. So, whether it's an express patch or regular uh, patch, which happens quarterly, or a major update that VMware is uh, introducing new software features in a uh, in an EXI release, VxWorld is going to deliver a software bundle that's validated against all the hardware configurations that are available in the VxWorld offerings. Can you say what the latest uh, VMware update release uh, is supported now by uh, VxRail? I uh, believe that there was an express patch that happened last month. So we have, so our policy is we support uh, patches or any EXXI release within one month of its release. Express patches, we try to do that within two weeks, whereas uh, major software updates, we do it within a month. 
believe the latest um, Geek Six Side release or Seven Zero happened probably uh, just last month. So we're probably supporting it right as of as of now. So okay. in terms Thanks. of a software release, a major software release, Update Two came out, uh, I believe, last quarter, and we we're supporting it within one month. So with a validated state, each time a user can, so a user has the option of selecting the next target version. And knowing, and they know that the target version is a validated state, so they can, and they have the choice of skipping releases because not for each cluster, it really depends on what applications they're running on it for them to select that next target version. They don't have to update every single time XXI produces a release because they may not apply to their particular cluster. So they have the ability to skip releases if they need to. We provide that flexibility for them. And after that cluster update, that target version is now that current validated state. And as clusters move along its life cycle, customers are confident that their applications are running safely and optimally while really taking advantage of each size latest software, uh, software uh, features or the latest security patches that there has been a few uh, related to vCenter of late in the past couple of months. So they always could be able to get to a release that they feel confident that they want to run on those clusters. All right, so let's talk about the, the compatibility. So we're enhancing the VXL LCM experience by introducing this compatibility with the LCM, which leverages the LCM's APIs and its framework to perform cluster updates or well, what they call remediation for in the LCM terms. So our tagline when it comes to being better together with VMware is that VXL is built with uh, VMware for VMware and to enhance VMware. And this compatibility with the LCM really aligns well with that tagline. Even when the LCM was introduced in vSphere 70 last year, I believe February or March, it was never a question of which automation or orchestration is better. Rather, it's really the distinct difference that continuously validated states is what separates VxRel when it comes to LCM. So we're porting that continuously validated states into the LCM framework such that the desired state is the continuously validated state. So as customers move from one desired state to the next, with VxRel, they're continuously validated states. Introducing this compatibility is a, um, a gateway to leverage current VLCM benefits and really to put VxRel in a position to enhance future capabilities that's going to be offered from uh, VLCM. But that said, users have the option to enable VLCM compatibility. They don't have to do it right now, but there are going to be use cases right now where it makes sense for some customers to enable VLCM. For others, they may want to wait till the cap capability set within VLCM to kind of grow and for VXL to take advantage of those. Then they may want to enable it in the future. We provide that flexibility, that option for them to do that. But let's take a look at what the current benefits of the VLCM compatibility will provide to customers. Currently, users can use VLCM to update clusters XXI software, NXXT, VSphere Watanzu, SVM OS, all in a single boot cycle. Sure, not all clusters have all that, but for a few customers, they're definitely going to benefit or enjoy that additional operational simplicity. And also immensely the time saving is going to provide by consolidating all these updates into a into one cycle. Another VLCM feature that VXL will be introducing is the ability to pause and resume cluster updates. And this is going to be beneficial for clusters that has a lot of nodes, but not enough time within a single maintenance window to do a full cluster update. So for customers, they now have the option to target a set of nodes within the cluster, maybe a set of nodes that's tied to a particular application and update that first. Then wait, wait a little bit later in the, in the future and update the remaining nodes in that cluster in a separate maintenance window. So more optionality, more flexibility for them. So, so Daniel, um... yep. We had heard yesterday that um, PowerStore uh, apps on and all that stuff can coexist with VxRail, and in fact, do coexist fairly well with VxRail. 
how does this uh, LCM or VLCM interoperate with, you know, PowerStore functionality or, or other non-VxRail cluster nodes and that sort of stuff? Yeah, in terms of lifecycle management, the, it's really impacting just the HCI stack. So as for PowerStore, they would still have to lifecycle manage through their uh, type of management stack in which they would have to interface with their, um, with their element manager to perform the updates. Um, I believe uh, in the, a little bit down further in the agenda, we could be talking about dynamic nodes in which they will be, can use VxRail as essentially as a, uh, a, a compute, uh, as a compute cluster for PowerStore. And that will well, for the PowerStore uh, T. So that will provide that optionality where you can make, you can really kind of make use of the LCM experience for, uh, for VxRail as a compute cluster. But at the same time, you can also make a uh, take advantage of some of the, uh, the power store type of enterprise level storage feature, uh, storage array features, such as like, you know, snapshots, uh, replication, that stuff. And, uh, but in terms of LCM, you'll still be going through power store to do that. All right, thanks. All right, so enabling the LCM for continuously validated states. From the XML manager, users will have the option for their clusters to be ELCM compatible. From the updates page, under settings, you can click the enable button and it'll just begin a simple workflow and I'll show, show you in the next, next bits of the slide. First, you will need to use the, you will need to enter the vCenter server administrator and root credentials, which is fairly simple. We, this is something that we do for cluster updates as well. VXWell will then scan and confirm that the cluster is in a continuously validated state per, before proceeding. So that scan will take a couple of minutes to do. And the final step is really porting that validated state into the VLCM framework so that it becomes that new baseline image. So in just a few steps, user can enable VLCM for continuously validated states. Now this piece, the enabling piece, is just a one-time event. The cluster update process is what customers will have basically constant exposure to. So I'm gonna get into that in the next slide. So even with the LCM compatibility, I've talked about the continuously validated state. This is still a really a VXL driven experience with the continuously validated states. Some VCN users may prefer the option to manage their own desired states and do their own research, identify their version stack, gather the install files, then test and validate against their own environment. And there's a benefit in that because they can get more flexibility of what they can run in their clusters taking advantage of the automation and orchestration provided by VLCM. But that's one way. But there are many HCI users who want that operational simplicity and certainty. Basically that, that easy button, where all that work is done for them. All they have to do is select the next target version, and they can have it all in a single bundle. So this update advisor that you see on the screen here is also something that we're introducing in the next software version as well to inform our customers what are the available update paths, including the component versions within. Essentially, it's a two-step process in VxRail that provides that level of operational simplicity at by continuously validated states. And with the VLCM compatibility, that single update bundle populates the desired state image, just like what VCN users use today to, for cluster updates with VLCM. So Daniel, this is Pietro here. Uh, just a Hello. confirmation, I understood correctly. So when uh, VLCM is integrated with the uh, VxRail own LCM, what happens is that uh, a stack a grade is triggered and uh, VLCM takes care of upgrading the VMware software, software stack and at the same time connect B uh, piggybacks into the VxRail LCM to, um, to get the desired state image at the hardware level so that the firmware and the BIOSes are fully compatible with the, with the desired state in the VMware side of things. Is that right? Yeah, essentially from the, the whole experience is still coming straight through VxL Manager. The desired state image is what we, uh, VxL delivers, because that's essentially the continuously validated state. So whenever the VxL user selects a target version, 
they get a continuously validated state in a single update bundle. That gets populated into the desired state image. So the framework is the VLCM, but what is delivered and what how we maintain that level of uh, cluster integrity is still maintained by VxRail. So in that sense, we're making use of the VLCM framework, but still really maintaining that level of cluster integrity that you know for VxRail users, that's what they kind of come to know with what they get with VxRail. Sure, that, that, that's yeah. that, that's clear. I mean, uh, hard, cluster integrity at the hardware level. This is what you mean. But what we're getting here is the synergy between the uh, you know the the integrity of the hardware level and the software stack level at uh, at the VMware from the VMware point of view, both at the same time. Yeah. So yeah, the that that desired state image is going to have the HSI version. So that continuously validated state is uh, is basically tested against and validated against that. Exxi, ESXi version. So you have that level of the software and hardware into in that uh, in that uh, continuously validated state. Yes. Moving on to what how does the cluster update process look like? It's really not really uh, not that different. So let's take a look through it, and now I'll walk you through. So with a BXL user, what they will do is they run that pre-check, preferably well in advance, so they know whether the cluster is ready for an update. If it's not they have the time to fix the issue ahead of the maintenance window. They may even use PreCheck as more of a planning tool in which they'll run it before they schedule the maintenance window because the ones that actually pass it, they know it's like, okay, they can schedule the maintenance window anytime they want. And the ones that don't, maybe they want to wait a little bit longer before they schedule that maintenance window. So the PreCheck does give some, uh, there, there's some things that, you, there's different things you can do to, uh, to use it. Next. Leveraging the VLCM framework, we've added drift detection. So we can analyze and inform about the delta between the current continuously validated state that's running on the cluster and the target when the desired continuously validated state that you want to update the cluster to. In this release, we're also providing the option to customize the desired state with non VXL managed component drivers like the fiber channel HPA. And uh, I believe Don's going to get into that a little bit further, a little bit later in today's in today's agenda. Well, I was just going to say, so drift's been detected. Does it take it back to the desired state automatically, or is that something someone has to dive in to change? For for this scenario, drift detection is what you kind of expect because you're trying to update the cluster. It's just basically telling you what will be updated for you to get from that current version to that next version. Okay, uh, so, so, but in my case, if it drifted due to other reasons or people just not doing the right thing, does yeah. it, how does it work then? Yeah, so we do, so th there's a feature that we call a compliance checker in which you can actually run that anytime they want. It's not just doing the cluster update process, they can run it throughout, but it is something that we're, um, Sometimes there is going to be some someone that's a rogue administrator that may update it and that unbeknownst to some others, uh, it will detect it. And depending on what it is, it could be easily remediated or it might require support. It really depends on what what has mm -hmm. been what has been changed. Um, but um, the, it happens, and yeah. this this compliance checker will definitely help spot those um, those issues before. Well. Spot, spot those, uh, think, uh, those that change before it really becomes an issue, hopefully. Yeah, thanks. So I just wanna make sure that it's the same as it was before. <laughs> so the updates, um, the actual customers have to wait from y for y'all to do all the testing and run the updates and, and bundle them together. And then they can download those and then they go through all these steps. And they also right. get to load in their own additional things. That's pretty cool. but. Yeah, uh, yeah, Gina. So we've added this area where you can uh, upload the drivers like the fiber channel HPA, and it kind of really it helps out because we're not saying that we're validating against that driver, but we're providing it. We're allowing them to add these things on so they can actually be part of a that that single boot cycle. So it really helps out in terms of time savings. But in terms of testing and making sure that it is um, uh, that it is. Uh, part of the, uh, I guess, the VMware HCL, that's really up to the customer to, uh, uh, customer's responsibility to do. But we're providing that option, which they can kind of layer on top of that update 
so they can do it all together at once. Uh, yeah. So once you add the uh, once you have the op once you add the non-vehicle managed drivers, that's an option. Then you also have the ability to also consolidate those VMware updates that I talked about in a couple slides ago. You can separately load the NXXT, VSphere, Watanzu, or other DSVM OS updates uh, separate from the VXML manager. And once that's done, from VXML manager, you can kick it off and it will basically signal VLCM to basically update all that's loaded for remediation. So, except for configuring the VMware updates, the customers are always within this VXML manager LCM experience. All right. So, the practice of Continuously validated states ensures the desired states in VLCM are validated. So making the VXL driven LCM compatible with, compatible with the LCM introduces these new capabilities to enhance the VXL experience. So now when preparing for a cluster update, the update advisor provides that list of available target versions. A single update bundle and the cluster readiness pre-check will put that customer on the right path. When it comes to executing the update, it now includes drift detection and the option to add those non vhl managed components into a single update cycle, including NXXT, Tanzu, or guest VM OS updates. So all within a single boot cycle uh, really introduces a lot of time savings if you have that many other, if you have that many updates and you have the ability to consolidate it into a single boot cycle. But with any cluster, only but that's only part of the management battle because maintaining cluster integrity throughout is important too. VX will also be introducing that compliance checker, which I just talked about, which checks the cluster against the continuously validated states. And it will basically allow the customers to really evolve their clusters over time. The practice of continuously validated states will allow their applications to run non disruptively even through software changes, such as running through all these XXI, when those XXI releases come, whether they're security patches or they're major updates with new software features, you hey, can take hey, advantage of it. Hey, Daniel, yes, do, do customers typically test their you know, VxRail nodes after an update, or they just go ahead and start running production directly on those uh, solutions? I, yeah, I, I'm trying to understand whether this is well-oiled machine or, or is this just making things a lot easier for the customer but in the end the customer does some validation as well well customers can run their own validation it really is up to uh, but a lot of people are confident that once they update they're good to go but there are going to be customers that are going to have their own they're going to have their own practice or their, or their own protocols within their own it uh, department in which they need to do some type of I don't know, basic or fundamental testing before they go live with it they may choose to have a, another cluster that they want to test it out first before they do it. But in the large part, we feel confident that if they up to, update to the next state, they're good to go. It's really up to the customers to see where they are in terms of their uh, IT practices and where the confidence level is. Because they also have to manage risk from their own end as well. Right, right, okay, thanks. Yeah. So, yeah, so maintain cluster integrity. So going through hardware changes, software changes, or even mixing different generations of uh, hardware. We, uh, with continuously validated states, it allows you to do that. So you can, to be, you can take it on to, you can add in the new, the latest 15G Intel-based Pixel platforms that were introduced last month. And you'll still be able to do this while keeping the cluster running up and the applications running non-disruptively. So this is essentially VxL LCM now with VLCM compatibility. So um, let me know if you have any questions, but this is essentially a presentation on this topic. Um, there are, if you, have, if you have more questions, there are some URLs that you can get to.